and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Arkin EPL-4. Now, in the past, Arkin had the SH-4, SH-4 Gen 2, and then the SH-4J, which were very feature-rich optics in terms of magnification, internal adjustment, and everything else. This time, they're catering to a slightly different market, being the lightweight, long-range hunting market. That's with the EPL-4 6-24 by 50. So in what ways does it cater to that market? Well, we're talking Japanese ED glass. We don't necessarily have as much internal adjustment as we see in the SH-4J or even the EP-5. We have 8 mils per revolution. We have an extremely lightweight optic. That's probably one of its biggest things. We have 23 ounces as opposed to the SH-4J, which I think is around 39. So a big chunky beast. So if you wanted all the features of the SH-4J in a lightweight body for your hunting rifle, maybe your Springfield Waypoint, Savage 110, Tika T3X, this is the option that would probably be right for you. So 50 millimeter objective, 34 millimeter tube, 20 mils of internal adjustment or 68 MOA if you have the MOA version. Uh, 8 mils per revolution, zero stop. The same easy, simple method of using a zero stop as on the SH-4J or the EP-5. We have an illuminated Christmas tree style reticle, which is a tad on the thicker side in my opinion, and we have a capped winged turret. So these are typically the features that the long range hunters were asking for and at a very, very reasonable price, which the EPL-4 comes at at 489, but it's generally always on sale around 370 US. Or in Canada, it's about 524. So still, even in Canada, very, very reasonable for a long-range hunting optic. So in terms of glass quality, we're talking about Japanese ELD glass, which is, at least in terms of what they have on their website, the same as the SH-4J. So you won't be disappointed either with this glass quality. So this is our 5G tower over at 2,000 yards. A lot of what I demonstrate in the videos, though, uh, I got to tell you, it is that sharp. It is that sharp. But if it's sharper than what I'm showing, it's just not representational. It's not, e it's not really possible to represent in the video. I could have two different optics at various price points, and one could look actually better than the other, even if it's not. It's a lot about how the optic interacts with my camera, how well the image transfers over. So... Yes, but I can tell you the EPL-4 has very, very good glass quality, and you will not be disappointed even in low light conditions. Next, let's go to the range and do a little bit of shooting. But hope for the best. Woo! I had to time that one with the swing. Oh, not easy. So as mentioned earlier, this is probably more for your lightweight hunting rifle. Then again, I had it on my heavyweight PRS rifle. Not really the same purpose. But that's what I was using for doing the long-range shooting. And if you want to support the channel, consider heading on over to cdnprecision.com where we have various shooting accessories and shooting tripods. Next, let's talk about the field of view. This is one thing I think might have been sacrificed a little bit on a 5 to 25 magnification optic or a heck, I think even on their SH4J. Yeah, the SH4J has a slightly wider field of view, 20 uh, and 5 feet. So this one has 18.5 and 4.65. So 18 feet in diameter at 100 yards on the lowest magnification of 6 and 4.65 at the highest magnification of 24. So it's definitely on the more narrow side of the field of views. Not obviously horrible. Then again, if you need to find your target, you're just going to have to back off that magnification a bit until you get it. Next is the Focus Parallax. So the grading, uh, the way they graded this Focus Parallax is a little bit different, but I think they did it for a very good reason. So we have 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 50, 75, and then we have 100, 200, and infinity. 100 to infinity is very close to each other. I think they did this for a good reason. For example, if you're not sure if your target's going to be between 100 and 350, it's a very short twist of the Focus Parallax knob, which I think was intentional. So 
If you're hunting and that target shows up, it's at 350, it's not a far twist to get that image nice and sharp. Also, in terms of fit and finish, and this isn't just specific to this EPL4. I mean, the review is specifically about this EPL4, but in terms of the Arkin series in general, all the fit and finish on all other optic is excellent. It is unquestionably shooting above its price point. Now, I've seen many, many optics. I review optics all the time, and their fit and finish, I'd say, competes with optics in the $1,000 price point. And I've seen optics in the $1,000 price point that aren't as smooth as Arkin's. So, uh, in terms of turrets, this is really where our meat and potatoes is in the optics. This is how they sound. So they sound and feel really sharp and really positive. It has the same exact zero stop system that our Arkin SH4 has, which is super easy and super simple. It has 20 mils of internal adjustment or 68 MOA if you have the MOA version. It has eight mils per revolution or 20 MOA if you have the MOA version. And nice and big beefy numbers, which is typically appreciated. One observation though, is the turret is actually smaller than the SH4J or the EP5. Obviously, as a hunting optic, that's probably what you're going to want, though. Now, let's go test these turrets. All right, let's start with the box test. Let's go three mils down. Let's go three mils right. Okay. Let's go back to zero. And back to zero. All right, let's test the tracking. Let's go three mils down. Okay, six. Good. The A box is a little tight though. Let's go nine. And 12. And 15. Right there. All right. Let's see how much internal adjustment it has. That's it. Alright, let's test the footage. Okay. And that's it. Alright, let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. In terms of tracking, the EPL4 tracks excellently. I mean, as did the SH4, as did the EP5. They track as well as I can test. You won't be disappointed with how well this tracks. It won't, you won't be losing your deer because of how your optic tracks. Next is the reticle. So you have two options. You either have the VPR or the VHR. So you get a mil or MOA version, and they're illuminated at that. And there is no washout from what I could tell in this reticle, which I think was the case with the original SH4. Also, reticles are very much personal preference. This comes down a lot to, I think, personal preference and what you're using it for. For hunting, you're probably gonna want a thicker reticle, and this one is a slightly thicker reticle. So why would you want that? Well, your target isn't gonna be easily acquired at 24 magnification if he shows up in front of you at at 100 yards. You're probably gonna wish you'd back that off to 10 or eight or heck, even six magnification. And at six magnification, you're gonna find that reticle is pretty darn fine. But you know, you bring that to eight or nine and it's actually usable. If you eliminate it and it's a little bit darker out, it'll be even more usable. So that's the point of having a thicker reticle. It becomes more usable the lower magnification you are. And lastly is the warranty. So they have a lifetime warranty, which is fantastic, which is what I want to see on all the optics I review, especially, you know, when they're like not just $200 scopes. You know, this is a, I guess in the US, 370 or in Canada, 524. And with it supported with a lifetime warranty, that really can give us confidence in the product. So for a ultra light hunting scope, I think the EPL4 is an awesome option. If you guys want a long range hunting scope, this is a great option to use. So that's my thoughts on the Arkin EPL4. If you guys enjoy this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I will see you in the next review.
Oh, and if you want to support the channel, consider heading on over to cdnprecision.com.